You guys are in for a big treat this week because we've come back from Chile with quite a bit of footage and it is fantastic really. The whole trip was a fantastic trip and we've put together a great short series of videos for you. The University of Concepcion invited us down. We're really honored to, to have fulfilled that position and uh, it's just been a great trip. It's been great meeting the people. To give you just a little bit of background here, this whole thing got started from an email that we received from Diego from the University of Concepcion. Now he requested that we would visit him in Chile, visit some of the boatyards down in Chile. I was kind of under the suspicion that maybe it had something to do with either building skiffs or you know trying to gain some knowledge about boat building the way we do it up here as compared to the way they do it you know, in Chile, but uh, when we did arrive, we were blown away by the sheer volume, the amount of woodworking going on in the three boatyards that we did visit. You know, to see that much work going on and that many shipwrights in the same area working away and enjoying themselves. They all seem to have smiles in their faces. They're on track the way they do it, the way they go about it, and the boats that they produce. And it was just an experience of a lifetime for me and I'm sure for uh, Halsey as well. We got some great footage, we learned a lot, we met a lot of really nice people. They treated us like a million dollars. We just had a great time, we ate big, we traveled around a little bit and saw some of the towns. Then we got down to business in the boat yard. The first stop on our trip was in Leibu. Now this is a fishing town if I've ever seen one. The amount of boats that are in the water that are, that are actually fishing is fantastic. We don't have anything like it that compares in the United States that I've seen. The town is located near the mouth of the Leibu River and a more beautiful place I've never seen. It's just a gorgeous little town. I just think it'd be a great place to, to be able to work and, and be able to see more of. And the shipyard that we went to was great too. They were building 30 boats, fishing boats, in the 50 some foot range, which is something I haven't seen in the United States of America. You know, the enthusiasm around wooden boat building in Chile is still there. And it's not about multi-millionaires, it's about need. People are building these boats because they need to fish. These boats are going out for you know, quite a distance. They go out for a month and sometimes they have to steam for uh, 10 days to get to the fishing ground. So these boats have to be sturdy, they have to be strong, they have to carry quite a bit of fuel and water. You know, they're making their own ice and all these things. These are serious fishing boats. Several boats are being built at the same time, all in different stages. Some of them are being framed, some of them are being planked. You know, some of them are being finished or the decks are being put on or whatever it might be. But they go out of here one at a time complete and it doesn't take them long. Like I said, it's really, really got a lot of work going on all at the same time. I can't imagine how many men are working here. But. Now I don't speak any Spanish at all and I couldn't catch on to it either. So the university had to provide us with an interpreter and uh, we've got a great interpreter, Andrea. She just did a fantastic job. She was enjoyable and she was fast at it. But, but that material rots. Right. So, this is... The synthetic doesn't... It was really something to be able to speak in English and have her just immediately translate it into Spanish and convey it to somebody else. Then I'd get something back from them and be able to answer it, whether it was question and answer or whatever it was. It just worked out so well. So, Andrea, I just want to thank you personally for that because you were fun to be with. We couldn't have done it without you. And this is eucalyptus as well. También es eucalyptus. No, esto es cipres. No, this is cypress. Cypress. Okay. Cypress. And the inner part, those are eucalyptus. Yeah. Eucalyptus. Right. So you can bend like eucalyptus. Frame. Do you have the frame is, is, is eucalyptus. Is it steam bent? Steam? Yes. Steam. Yes, with hot water. Hot water. Yeah. Just boiled like. Right. The first person we met in this boatyard was Arturo. Now he runs the boatyard and his brothers all work here. There's quite a number of brothers that work here. There's very large families down here. Right. Wedge it, yeah, wedge it up against yeah, sure. exactly. I understand that, sure. He was a fantastic guy, really big smile on his face, and he showed us all around the boatyard about all the boats and the different stages of completion and what they go through to, to get them accomplished, you know, what tools they use and all these different types of things. 
you know. And with me, I kind of relate that back to what I see in the United States, you know. Some situations are the same and some aren't. You know, some things are done a little different and some things are done the same. But it's a Carvel plank boat, and uh, which just means it's a smooth plank boat. So you're going to rivet them afterwards? Yeah, put, put a row on it and then bang it over. Yeah. Sure. There'll be a lot of that going on. Oh, a pattern, yeah, that's what I was asking about. So these planks here, uh, obviously the garbage plank has gone into it first and there's been a plank, uh, plank left out of it here. I suspect that that is all so that a lot of the sawdust and chips and everything can be emptied out of the boat without any problems rather than vacuuming it out or having to dig it all out. That would be the last plank in. And uh, some of these planks are quite straight. They're twisted, but they're not edge set. But then as you get up higher, there's a massive edge set in the plank in here. I wouldn't have even thought that you could get this much edge set out of planks like this. It's not something that I've ever done to get that much edge set. Usually edge set planking on the boats that I'm familiar with have got a much more graceful or a much, you know, much less edge set in them whether they're edge set or not. And uh, these are not patterned and sawn out to the shape. They're edge set in place and they put, uh, they put a, a block of wood in between with red wedges and they wedge the plank and up against the next plank. And uh, amazingly enough, it fits quite, quite nicely actually. And uh, I was also talking about uh, the seam compound. I believe the seam compound is like polyester. It's like a car body putty almost. It's a, it's a catalyzed uh, polyester that they put a little uh, um, uh, a hardener in it and mix it up and then squeeze it in and that goes over the acrylic caulking that goes in the boat and then another thing here this is pretty interesting this is the water line right here you know that they've got uh, mocked onto the boat there's still a string on there uh, I'm, I'm not exactly certain how that works but apparently they've shot that with a laser I think you know, or a laser or a, or a transit, you know, to get these positions and then they will put a string around it and uh, that's the water line right there. A framing, sure. Yeah. So this boat is all framed up and planked up and the transom is left out of it at this point because you can climb up in through the boat without the transom in it very easy rather than climbing over the, the uh, over the gunnel and uh, this boat's also all the riveting has been done in this boat right here all the robes have been put on the copper nails and uh, and, and uh, peened over that's a tremendous amount of work in these boats because they don't rely on screw fastenings or through bolting or anything like that it's all riveted construction you know it's nailed into the major frames which are set up first and then some of the plankings put over the major frames, then the uh, steam bent frames or boiled framing is put into it, and then the planking goes on afterwards. So we're down below in one of these fishing boats and uh, everything's on board, the fuel tanks are on board, the water tanks are on board already, not mounted in position, but just put in place inside the boat so that they could build around it. And, uh, I just love the way they've done this. They, they haven't set up molds to build this boat. The frames of the boat right here are the mold. These are set up first, and then some planking's put over it, and then the bent framing is put in between the major frames. So it's got major frames that are sawn, and bent framing in between the major frames. There's one, two, three, four bent frames in between every sawn frame. And uh, you can see that it's got very large overhead timbers quite closely placed together in plank deck. Uh, just a traditional way of building and uh, my heart really lies in this. I love this. This is great. Very interesting. Yeah, and a big, big heavy stern post or rudder post right in here and a big heavy clamp. Very nice. Very nice. Three crooks here for uh, yes. uh, forefoots and stems. You know, and this is one of them right here. This is the same, uh, this would be like the piece of wood that you would see as a stem and a forefoot. Yes, here you see the shipwrights P 
tension a plank into position. Now it's edge set the entire plank. It's not cut exactly the same shape. It has never been patterned or anything like that. They might have cut it to a little bit of a sweep, but it's kind of like trial and error. Then they'll hold it up in position and pinch it into place with some blocks like you see. Now if it doesn't fit perfect, they'll just scribe it a little bit with a pencil. They know exactly where to take some off of it. They'll take it down again, take an electric plane to it, plane it a little bit, and try it again. Take a look at it, decide whether or not they need to trim it in any way. They'll take it down, trim it with an electric plane, and put it back in position a couple times, and it's done. You know, it's, it's trial and error, but they get away with it, and they do a really nice job of it. I, I'm just impressed to death, you know. I love the way they do it, the way they go about it, the type of work they do, and they're working hard. Nobody's giving these guys light duty, take my word for it. This is heavy duty work right here. I like seeing that. That for me is really a joy because, you know, people are using what they got to accomplish a tremendous amount of work. It's fantastic and uh, more power to them. And uh, I say keep the good work up because, you know, I love to see wooden boats being built and they're certainly doing it down here. Thank you again. Yeah, right. Thank you again. Nice to see you. We had a great first day in Chile, but we're not going home yet. We've got a few more boatyards to visit and a lot more to talk about. I think you'll find it really interesting, maybe a surprise to you that things like this are going on in the world and makes you wonder how much more of this kind of stuff is going on around the world that we don't know about.